Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. It's Super Bowl weekend, Super Bowl 52, I believe, will take place in the US Bank Stadium, Minneapolis, Minnesota, on Sunday. And this year, we've got two teams fighting it out for the Vince Lombardi Trophy, and they're the New England Patriots and the Philadelphia Eagles. Sure, the New England Patriots are led by the legendary quarterback Tom Brady, and predictably, they're by far the bookies' favourite. But hey, I'm British, I like an underdog, and I was raised on Rocky movies, and also a sucker for a Philly steak cheese sandwich. So guess who I'm going to be rooting for? But for any Patriot fans listening, I must mention that the defending champions are chasing their third title in four years. And let's not forget that Brady himself is playing an unsurpassed eighth Super Bowl. And that ain't bad for someone that was 199th pick in the 2000 NFL draft. But this is a tech show, not a sports show. So before you guys get a cold sweat, the theme of today's episode is actually about creating cool augmented reality experiences at sporting events using your smartphone. Vertex Apps have introduced a new way to hold multiplayer augmented reality experiences at sporting events and that's something that really caught my attention and thought it'd be a great fit for Super Bowl Sunday here. So buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to California so we can speak with Jeff Green who's going to talk about exploring unique ways of combining real and virtual worlds all using mobile devices. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Jeff. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Hi. Well, thanks for having me. I'm uh, Jeff Green. I'm the founder of Vertex Apps, and uh, we are the creators of a new app called Vertex Arena. And the idea of this app is it's um, augmented reality competitions at sporting events and uh, concerts. Cool. Now, augmented reality is finding its way into our lives now through various apps, services and games from everything from Pokemon Go to Snapchat stickers and so many other marketing tactics out there. So obviously with the Super Bowl just around the corner, you've designed an AR app for the live NFL games called, like you said there, Vertex Arena. But as we're approaching Super Bowl fever, I invited you on today to find out more about it. So can you help the listeners visualize exactly what this AR app Vertex Arena is and also the story behind it? Sure, absolutely. So imagine that you're at the game, you know, the big game, and uh, during uh, there's pauses during the game, right? You know, during a timeout or halftime um, between the quarters, that kind of thing. And so right now there's some entertainment that will appear like on Jumbotron or maybe there's something that would occur on the field. But the idea of this app is that during those pauses in the game, um, we will actually be holding a stadium-wide or actually worldwide competition that you can participate in using your own mobile device. And so if you're at the stadium, you would bring out your phone, you you would receive a notification on your phone that this was uh, a game was starting up. You bring out your phone, you point it at the field, and when you do that, and they, when the game starts, then there will be a virtual uh, virtual uh, characters running around on the field, and you'll be interacting with them and um, scoring points by doing various things. We have two kinds of games. One is a kicking game, where you basically flick your finger on the screen to kick a ball at targets that are on the virtual targets that are there on the field. And then a second game where you have these uh, receivers, uh, American football receivers running around and you try to pass the ball to your receiver and avoid throwing an interception to the opposing player. So the idea is over the course of, this, of the Super Bowl, we'll have a series of these games, you know, one at the first quarter and one at halftime and so on. And you'll be able to, to uh, you know, bring out your phone, participate in it, and then uh, you score points for yourself and also for the team that you choose to join And then at the end of the day, at the end of the real game, there'll be a a winner for the virtual game as well. And so what I described is that's the experience at the stadium. And that's really, you know, what our what our goal is, is to to um, engage fans at the stadium. But people at home will also be able to play. And uh, when you play at home, you set up the augmented field on like a desk or a table or a floor, wherever you want to. Uh, And then you'll see the same game that others are seeing, but you'll see it right there in your living room. So in theory, then, you and I could play against each other on the eve of the Super Bowl. So, you know, you're in California. I'm here in the UK. 
Could, yep. Would we be able to play and compete against each other? How does that work? Absolutely. So what happens, you know, it's a, it's a networked game. And so you would download the, the app beforehand on your phone, and it's available right now on Google Play and on uh, mm-hmm. iTunes, you know, for Android and for iOS devices. So you can download it now. And then what happens is when a uh, communal game begins, then there's a trigger. And uh, everybody who's participating uh, will receive a notification that that game is occurring. And uh, you know, usually we'll give a, a little warning. You'll know, say like in five minutes, a game is gonna start up. And then when the actual game begins, you get like 20 seconds to, to come in and get everything ready. And then the game would begin. And so everybody who's online uh, or has uh, you know started up the app that day uh, would receive a notification and would be able to play. And the games are short. So uh, the, again, the intent is to provide uh, you know this additional entertainment during downtimes of a sporting event. And those breaks in the in the event are you know relatively short. And so these these games are purposely very short. Um, they're about a minute long. So I've been to a few sporting events in the US, and am I right in saying that it's very similar to the idea of those Jumbotron games during those big sporting events, except that the audience can actually participate and have a stake in who wins? Is that right? Exactly right, yeah. I mean, that was essentially the genesis of the idea. Is, uh, we were at a game, and you know, they, they, as I said earlier, they have some entertainment that they'll show in the Jumbotron. And they'll, often you'll see something like a, a shell game, you know, where the cups move around, and you try to guess where, uh, you know, which cup the item is underneath and it's just something that gets displayed on the screen right now right and everybody yells out their answer you know cup one two or three and even though it's very simple people still are excited about it you know they're at the game they're looking to have fun looking to to have a good time and so you know my thinking was you know we have these devices uh, everyone's carrying around these devices now they're so powerful you know, we can actually create an entire world you know, that is visible through your device and so the idea was, you know, here we have a large audience that is looking for something fun to do during these breaks, and maybe we can give them something really entertaining and exciting to do with uh, with their own phone uh, at that time. And am I also right in saying that for this year's Super Bowl in Minneapolis, it will be the first time users will have that chance to participate live, either at the game or watching on television? And if that is right, was that always your aim to be the first to do that? Well, it was definitely, uh, I mean, it, you're right, you're right. It is the very first time. Yep. And I wouldn't say that uh, the Super Bowl was always our first target, yep. but, uh, you know, the opportunity was there. And so, you know, we're basically using it as a uh, kind of an announcement of what's possible, right, to, to kind of demonstrate that this idea is out there and then it's real and it works. And uh, and then the, the intent is to then roll it out at other sporting events, um, you know, in the future. So how do you begin to compete with apps such as Facebook and Twitter and Snapchat, you know, for that people just turn to automatically during those empty spaces of life? How do you get them off there and onto your sure. app? Is that one of your biggest challenges? Well, I think so, yeah. Um, but I think what we're really trying to do is kind of capture that same energy that you feel at a live sporting event and apply it to a game, right? You know, a game that you're actually participating in. Right? And when you go to a real sporting event, there is that additional, there's this palpable energy that you feel, right? When everybody's cheering for the team or, or yelling or whatever, whatever it might be, you know, that's part of the fun of being at a game. And that, you know, it's something that you really cannot get for some, you know, other kind of mobile app. You know, there's no, nothing else that kind of harnesses that number of people in that same location at, that, at the same time, right? And so that's, that's what we're really trying to capture. And that's what really makes it unique. Now, we do have a lot of entrepreneurs and people on their own startup journeys listening. So I've got to ask as well, I mean, is app fatigue a real challenge now? Because if there are any other app developers listening to his talk now, I'm interested in what your secret source is to getting people to download the app or game that you create. Right. Well, I think the, the key is to be unique in some way. Yeah. You know, uh, you want to do something that is different from what people have already seen. Um, because there's a lot of things already out there, obviously, and people are using them. But, uh, you know, I think we'll, you know, this, is, this, this approach that we have is something that I don't think people have seen before. Um, and uh, one thing I should, should have mentioned earlier is that, you know, when you are at the game and you are playing it and you're pointing it at the field, you're actually seeing it from your own, 
the um, from your own perspective. And so what I mean by that is somebody who's sitting at the 50 yard line of an American football game, you know, they see it as though it's happening right there in front of them. Whereas somebody who's sitting at the end zone, you know, would see it from the side, just like you would see the real game, right? So it kind of creates this illusion that these virtual characters and, and, and the action there is happening, actually happening there in that same space, but visible only through the window of your device. Yeah, so we, we think we're creating this unique experience that um, we're hoping people enjoy. And I would imagine that you'd get a tap on the shoulder by the person sat behind you saying, hey, that's really cool. Uh, <laughs> Is that your plane? <laughs> absolutely. Be sure to tell them it's a Vertex Arena. <laughs> and, get them down, <laughs> and get them on your team because you can play both as a team and individually So at the same time. So when you start up the app, you choose which team you want to join. For now, it's just a very simple uh, red or blue team. But uh, maybe in the future, you'll actually be able to affiliate with um, you know, one of the teams actually participating, the real teams. And then um, as you score points, you score points for yourself, uh, but then you also score points for your, for your team. So we're trying to you know, uh, um, encourage people to play both you know, for their team, to help their team win, but then also at the end, there's a, there's a leaderboard with, uh, with your individual score as well. So you can see how you did relative to everybody else. So for anyone listening that wants to give this a try and be uh, be the cool friend with the AR app to liven up breaks at this year's Super Bowl party, can you just tell them how to get up and running and how to, and how to get the most out of this game? Absolutely. So like I mentioned, it is available right now on um, Google Play for Android devices and iTunes for iOS devices, um, you know, iPhones and so on. And so you know, it's, it's downloadable right now. And there's actually a practice mode in the game. So you can play the game just on your own, um, you don't have to wait for um, a communal event to occur. You can just play it on your own at any time and kind of get a feel for these two games that I described, and this kicking game and the passing games. And so then you'll be an expert. And then when the actual time rolls around, you know, or w- when the when Super Bowl is, is uh, occurring, you know, be sure to have your phone on, and uh, you'll re- be receiving notifications when something occur or when an event is going to occur. Like I said, you know, you'll probably receive a notification five minutes or so. Well, actually, first we'll say, you know, there's going the next competition is going to be occurring at the first quarter, and then maybe five minutes before it seems like that's going to happen, you get another reminder that that's going to happen, a notification, and then when the game is actually starting, you'll get um, a 20 second warning uh, with this notification, and at that time you'll bring out your phone. If you're at the game, like I said, you point it at the field. If you're at home. You can point it at uh, really anything, but uh, you know you can make it look like it's on your desktop or, or your coffee table, next to the guacamole or whatever it might be, and then you know pl- participate when the game starts. Fantastic. Now, as this is going out before the Super Bowl, I'm going to ask you to call the game as well. I mean, I know you're in California. Yeah. This is a bit of a, an East Coast affair this year, but uh, are you going to are you going to be able to call the game? That's a tough one, but you know, um, you know, Brady is uh, is pretty amazing, but you know, it would be nice to see the Eagles. Uh, take it um so i'm gonna i'm gonna go for the eagles yeah i think everyone's secretly cheering the eagles aren't they but i'll probably get a barrage of emails now for saying that so i better shut up (laughs) you put me on the spot there yeah uh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) so what's next for vertex apps is there anything else on the horizon that you can share with us today absolutely so like i said the super bowl is kind of a demonstration or announcement uh, of what's possible and then, but the real, uh, well, we'll be rolling it out more broadly um, for the Major League Baseball season later in the year, you know, for um, March and April. And for then, at that time, you know, it'll be available in a you know, much larger number of ballparks and more people will actually be able to participate at a game. So that is really kind of a larger rollout of the app. So that's, that's what's on the horizon. That's what we're looking forward to. Well, a huge thanks for coming on the show today. I really appreciate it. And as someone that sits at sport and events, there's nothing worse than people just soullessly looking down at their phone, endlessly scrolling down a Facebook feed. So to have a, right. as a tech guy, to have a multiplayer augmented reality experience live at a sport and event on the field in front of me, I think it's just amazing. It uh, ticks so many boxes for me. So a big thank Great. you for coming on today. Hi, well, thanks very much for having me. I think today's episode was perfect for everyone to get in the mood for Super Bowl Sunday and hopefully help you get some cool kudos points from your friends as you introduce a little AR into your Super Bowl party. Will the city of brotherly love defy expectations one more time? 
Any team that embraces their reputation as underdog by wearing canine masks, they get my vote every time. But what's your opinion on AR at sporting events? And also, what's your Super Bowl score predictions? And where can I get my canine mask at short notice from? These and many, many more questions deserve to have answers. So please send me a quick voicemail by visiting my site at techblogwriter.co.uk slash podcasts. Tweet me at Neil C. Hughes. And of course, email is still techblogwriter at outlook.com. And finally, a big thank you for tuning in today. Having an amazing weekend. We'll hook up again together on Monday. But until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.